Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So sings the chorus in Handel's Messiah, and so he sings the church for the last 2,000 years, exalting in this great mystery of the Christ child. And who is this child? Isaiah tells us, they name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His wisdom exceeds that of Solomon. He is more powerful than David the king. His fatherhood over the people is greater than that of Moses. Moses, after all, liberated the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, but Jesus liberates the world from the yoke of Satan and the bonds of sin. And he is the true Prince of Peace, who brings a greater peace than anything dreamt of by the patriarchs. St. Bernard of Clairvaux says he is wonderful in his birth, counselor in his preaching, God in his works, mighty in the passion, everlasting father in the resurrection, and prince of peace in eternal happiness. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This is the great mystery that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that the eternal Word, the Son of the Father, became flesh. He took upon himself our human nature. He truly became one of us in order to save us. God became man so that men might become sons of God. He is the Word incarnate, and he is also love incarnate, since God is love. And since mercy is God's love towards sinners, the Christ child can truly also be called mercy incarnate. The mercy of God has become flesh among us. St. Gregory Nazianzen says, Christ in the flesh, Rejoice with trembling and with joy, with trembling because of your sins, with joy because of your hope. As St. Jerome says, death came through Eve, but life has come through Mary. The Word was made flesh, but he didn't become flesh in Rome, the capital of the empire, or in any of the great cities. He became flesh in Bethlehem, the little village whose name means house of bread. Not in a powerful section of the empire, but in the remote and poor province of Judea. Not the son of a king or of a wealthy family, but he was born of a peasant woman in poverty and known as the son of a carpenter. Why? Why would he be born in such a way? So that it would be clear to the entire world that the transformation of the world did not come about through riches or power or family influence, but only through the power of God who came to earth to save us. Our incarnate God humbled himself to become a helpless child, hidden away, lying in a manger. And the Christ child dwells with us today, hidden away and helpless under the appearance of bread and wine. The eternal word who sprang down from heaven to earth comes down upon our altar at mass. He who was laid in a manger was, is placed inside the tabernacle where he is often ignored or treated disrespectfully. Sometimes even priests don't treat our Eucharistic Lord all that well. St. John of Avila, one of our doctors of the church, says, once said to an irreverent priest, for God's sake, treat him better, for he is the son of a good father. There is a danger that we allow the joy of this season to pass far too quickly that we forget about the love of 
God, of God incarnate. And soon we will return to what we call the real world. But this, my brothers and sisters, this is the real world. Divine love became flesh for us. We must cling to this truth, this goodness, this beauty with every fiber of our being. Let the birth of the Christ child and his continuing presence with us transform our lives from this day forward. May we live as new men and women transformed by him. St. Ambrose said so well, he made himself a child to enable you to become a perfect man. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes to free you from the bonds of death. He came down to earth to enable you to rise up to heaven. He had no place in the inn so that you might have many mansions in heaven. He, being rich, became poor for our sake, St. Paul says, so as to enrich us with his poverty. The tears of this crying child purify men. They wash away my sins. God love you.